So uh, welcome everyone. I uh, appreciate everyone uh, joining us today uh, for uh, you know uh, open customer presentation on industrial uh, heat trace products, specifically with Chromalox. Um, you know, moving forward, my name is uh, Derek Debar. I'm the field sales training manager. Um, today, uh, specifically, we're gonna we're gonna focus on our industrial heat tracing products. Uh, just kind of a walk through the industrial side of things. Uh, I'm gonna go through them, you know, kind of one by one. Tell you what they are, the fit, form, and function, um, how they kind of go together, what we offer, some of the advantages, Chromalox, uh, uh, using Chromalox uh, heat tracing products could, could help you in your process, and we'll have an open forum for questions at the end. Again, appreciate everyone uh, attending, and we will get started. So uh, real fast, um, because we're talking about only one product that Chromalox is, is uh, manufacturing, the heat trace products, it is important to kind of just give you an overview or go back for some of you that are on the call. You may not realize maybe the history of Chromalox. We really are the original electric heater manufacturer, and that started with the, the original patent in 1914 with the L. Wigan, um, to various products, and, and I won't go through those today, uh, to the tubular elements that we're all familiar with uh, out in the marketplace, to big process systems, to um, even medium voltage designs and a lot of new technology pretty much throughout the century, right, into, into today. Um, today, specifically, we're going to talk about the industrial heat tracing products, but I, I think it's really important for everyone on the call to understand that if you're familiar with Chromalox for heat trace, fantastic. We're, we're doing a good job. If you're not so much, it's important to remember all the other products and history that goes into our design, our process, maybe some controls, that we can leverage uh, throughout all of our product lines. So it's just important to know that you know we got the history there, the technology, and, and a lot of other um, product uh, segments that we can pull from to, to really provide you the best design and, and products for your application. So going forward, uh, heat tracing products. Now I, I, I always think of these in, in, in two categories. Uh, the self-regulating cable is what we're going to focus on. We have constant wattage and MI and, and it's a couple other options. But on the self-regulating cable, you think of a commercial application as such a roof and gutter, the icing, uh, which is very much us. Or, you know, industrial, oil and gas, pipes, uh, process systems. And, and that's what we're going to focus on with the industrial product. But I did want to bring it up as we do have both available. Uh, they're handled... Uh, kind of in different market segment groups, meaning, you know, some some fall in the commercial line or we're going to fall more on the industrial line products. But it's important to remember we have both. Um, just today we're going to focus on the industrial line and then obviously the quick install guide that you see there on the right is available to everyone. Uh, our marketing team does a good job with the um, brochures and installs and all that stuff and they're all available on our website. So moving on to products, um, an overview of what's available. You've got the self-regulating line. You can see that there on the left. Uh, got the low temperature, medium, high temperature uh, designs, class one, div one. We'll talk about a little bit uh, more about that in a minute. Uh, constant uh, wattage type cable. Uh, we call them engineered cables. Some people refer to them as zone, uh, zone heating. Uh, we've got a series long line, which is a little unique. MI for your higher temperature stuff. And again, as I uh, forementioned, uh, the commercial heat trace line, which we'll cover on other trainings as we move forward. So let's dive in. Self-regulating heat, heating cable. Pretty pretty simple if you think about it. It's, it's an extruded um, uh, polymer uh, mix, uh, mix. We call it a carbon black mix. And that's your resistive material, the carbon black mixed with polymers. And essentially you, you've got two conductors running through it, the electrical paths between them, um, the polymer itself with the carbon black impregnated in it is the resistor. And so now you can cut it to length and, and how it works is essentially as you, you know, run the, the voltage, you've got the resistive between it, the, the polymer expands, changing its resistance. So therefore it becomes quote self-regulating. It, it, you know, as, as it raises in temperature, its output decreases. As it lowers in temperature, its output increases. And we have some some design guides and some things to consider along the way of you know maximum run lengths you know what breaker you're feeding it with and that type of stuff but the core product itself is essentially this it's just the concentrations are different based on the output and what you need for your application 
Now we have different, obviously jackets over there. So there's a grounding mesh that the, all the products come with. Uh, we used to offer it just with the grounding mesh, which we don't no longer offer that anymore, which would be the C option. And then you'll have a protective coating, um, either the CR jacket or a, we call it a CT jacket, which is pretty industry standard for those terms. Think of it um, as like a, a, there's a floor polymer and then a Teflon coated jacket for corrosive and, and you know, higher, um, more industrial, you know, uh, corrosive applications. So that's kind of your, your basic model heating cable. I mentioned before the ratings. Uh, depending on the manufacturer, you can obviously see the chromalox line right there. It's it's either rated because these heat trace in general is designed. You're designing to offset heat losses. Uh, specifically in the industrial, we're not talking, you know, roof and gutter melting ice. We're talking about industrial pipes. Maybe it's freeze protection in, in a water pipe. Uh, maybe you're maintaining a temperature and say a, a food and bev application or a process system or you know a chemical facility. You've got a process, a product at a temperature at, at one location. You're moving it through piping or, or um, you know, to the process itself, and you don't want to lose temperature. You want to make sure when it when it leaves the tank and gets to the process is the same temperature. So you're offsetting losses. And how do you do that? You do that with insulation type, thickness, all that. But at the same time, there's still some amount of loss. So therefore, the self-regulating heating cable is ideal for this because again, it's designed to input and offset your losses to the environment. With that said, all your cable is rated at either 40 or 50 degrees, depending on the manufacturer. And the reason they do that, if I get five watts a foot at that 50 degrees, that's that's the five watts a foot. However, at higher temperatures, it's two, three watts per foot. And that's kind of illustrated here on the graph on the right. Um, and that's inherently how self-regulating cable works. You may or may not know, we do get this question all the time at Chromalox. Oh, we bought self-regulating cable. You know, why is it still heating? We're at temperature and stuff like that. It's not controlled unless you buy the controllers, which we'll get to here at the end. Um, it just that's it, it, that's how it maintains its temperature. Its output is, is variable of the process it's in, and hence why it works that way. So moving on, the types of cable Chromalox offers. Our standard industrial cable we call SRL. So that's just self-regulating low temperature cable. And it's important to point out to everyone on the call, and, and oftentimes you know, people don't realize this, our standard cable, our standard SRL cable is already uh, third-party certified and registered for class one div two, which let's be honest, is a pretty much the majority of your applications out there. So you think of, of common areas and non-hazardous applications, that's this cable. If you think of up to class one div two, it's still the same cable. Certifications uh, move forward with it, you're fine. Now we do have class one div one available and I'll, I'll show that in a second. But the real important thing at the, you know, when it comes to design and installation is now one, what temperature am I maintaining? So you make sure you have the right output cable and temperature rating for the, the, the materials in the cable to survive and maintain at that temperature. But the other really, really important temperature to remember is the exposure temperature. Again, if this is freeze protection, no problem, no concerns. But in a process situation, uh, you know, again, like a chemical plant or, you know, asphalt, whatever the process is, um, there could be cases where you're maintaining temperature at, at freeze protection or you maintain temperature at higher temperatures. And when you get into the much, much higher temperatures, it, it all depends on the application. And I use this as my example because we get this a lot where somebody would say use this for freeze protection or maintaining 100 degrees, something low temperature, right? In a, we'll say food and bev or a dairy or some application where there's also a cleaning cycle involved or some other process exposed to the cable. And this is where the exposure temperature becomes a big issue because you may be maintaining a lower temperature, but through some process, like I said, uh, you know, cleaning process or, or various other reasons, the exposure could be higher and that could damage the cable. So there's, there's, those are the two temperatures in pick, selecting your heating cable that you should most focus on. With that said, you've got the low temperature. We also have process temperature. So, you know, the, the makeup's a little bit different and this is designed for higher temperatures. So now you can see that the temperatures for SRP is, you know, process temperatures up to 230F. 
or exposure temperatures up to 275. So, you know, we're moving, you know, past just general water freeze protection to, to processes. And then we have the SRME, uh, which is your medium temperature uh, t applications. That would be up to exposure temperatures of 425 in the process. Moving uh, beyond that, we will have MI cable available. I'll talk about that in a second. But sticking with the self-regulating cables that Chromalox offers, you've got, you know, design, output, you've got your, you know, you're feeding your breaker. Now you've got to put connection kits. How does this heat trace, you know, how do you fit up the heat trace to the power uh, distribution? And that's where the connection kits come into play. Um, if you're familiar with Chromalox, great in the U series, and we're gonna talk about that in a second. Um, we have some older designs that are still available, but it's just important to understand, you know, what we have and what's available and what quite, uh, quite honestly is is the difference of each. So a few, uh, probably going back five, 10 years ago, Chromalox moved to what we call our U series connection kits. Now uh, we use the, the U uh, stands for universal and the universal is universal uh, certifications. So, you know, you got the UL, the CSA, the FM. Um, so for different, you know, country locations, different third party, this matches all of those. Um, they've got a terminal block on the inside. It, it snaps in, DIN rail mounted, real easy to, to wire and do. Even some of our competitors have something similar. Um, our connection lights, as you see there in the picture, you know, in-seal lights are uh, LED, uh, really durable, all designed. They're, they're, you can get them in different colors if you need. Um, but here is something I want to point out to everyone. And if there's something you take with you today, if you install heat trace or if you know anything about heat trace, this is, you know, this is the thing that is really nice when going to install these. Um, some people, you know, reference, we can go into the quality and design a cable later. Uh, but if you're one of those folks out there that thinks cable's cable, that's fine. But here's one of those, those uh, design advantages to, to a Chromalox connection kit that you may want to take with you. And so um, a lot of different ways to terminate cable. Um, but ours have uh, basically this, this the secondary piece here, this, this uh, little threaded uh, connection and a gasket or little rubber, rubber grommet, I'm sorry, um, that the cable just slot, simply slides through. You can use a, a wire, uh, wire wax or whatever to make it move smoother. Don't really need that. And what, what this is, what this makes it so nice to other product or other connection kits and other manufacturers out there. Uh, some have some, some lids that don't necessarily uh, connect well. They don't have the encapsulated screws. Um, some of them are, are whole threaded lids, which aren't always easy to thread. Ours goes you know, up through the, the connection area here into the grommet. And then this piece here seals and locks in the grommet around the cable holds the cable in place. It's completely watertight. And oh, by the way, because it's it, it's got some flexibility and all that, there's no weep hole to worry about moisture buildup. Uh, none of those things are required and it completely seals off the box. Um, this is really handy and nice. If you are familiar with heat trace and you, you have a lot of experience with it, it makes it real uh, smooth, easy and adjustable on site uh, to work with. So that's just, it's kind of a, a really handy design that is unique to Chromalox that I'd like to illustrate to everyone. Uh, and, and speaking of which too, and I, I wanna point this out because I see it all the time, you know, we're responsible for the cable and the connection kits, but the, the installer and, and everybody that goes to put these into place, you know, you wanna have service loops where like I just mentioned, you might come up short somewhere, maybe you have a bad uh, termination and you gotta pull some more cable. That's all part of good install that we'll talk about in a second. But also, you know, the electrical side of this thing, you want, it's important to remember, this is heating cable. You want uh, some kind of conduit drain. We have seen some cases where even though that grommet that I mentioned seals the box and has a really good install, we never think of the power connection side of this. And we've had, uh, you know, <laughs> several, you know, field issues where somebody comes in and it's been filled with water, uh, all feeding back from some other installation. So it's not necessarily the cable or the box issue as much as, the overall install. So we have a lot of ISOs and examples of this in our install literature, and, and you're welcome to all of that. Um, you, you know, your contractor should know how to install it properly, and we like to provide the, the uh, literature and training. Um, we're going to offer training to contractors, and I'll talk about that at the end, to ensure that it's installed properly 
and you get a long life out of the product, especially in critical applications. Moving on, um, some of you may or may not uh, remember or, or have these installed. These these are our older kits, our older connection kits, and they're good. Um, you know, they're they're a little bit different. They're much lower profile. Um, maybe you know not not so much encapsulated gaskets and screws. But I do want to point out they are still available. They're out there. People use them all the time. If you come across them, I, you know, you're, you know, don't feel like that, that, oh, that's not a Chromalox product. It certainly is. And it all fits together the same and all the same third parties. Of course, we have the, uh, we'll say, less costly connection kits, you know, with the, uh, uh, the little, you know, end caps and the, you know, the RTV and, you know the general design and regular junction box that is of course available as well a little less industrial but moving to more industrial i mentioned before we do have class one div one products available for installation again you're not going to come across it too often but it's important to know that it's there maybe you're close to a wellhead or you know there's a gas present or something and you need that certification and it's it's pretty much like the, the standard product that we offer, only we now have the Division One hazardous uh, rating on it. Uh, the uh, maintenance temperatures and exposure temperatures are the same, uh, but the stamping and the third party, it is important to remember that we want to, you, you got to have the right product uh, to meet the area classification. So, you know, the, the low temperatures is the same. We have the medium temperature, just like the cable before. Uh, but the real difference here is it's not so much the cable, it's the connection kits. So these, ki these kits need to be certified for the class one div one area. Now, if you're familiar with industry, these connection kits should be no surprise to you. Um, you've got the, you know, the packing material, the isolation uh, connection, those thread in, they put them in. It's pretty much the, the standard throughout the industry on how this goes, and we offer them as well. Uh, they match up to our cable. All fine and good. Uh, from there, moving on, we have uh, we we do have constant wattage uh, cable available. We've always had constant wattage avail available, uh, and this is exactly what you would think it is. It's constant wattage. Basically, and without I guess having a larger picture of this, you've got the two conductors, much like you have with the self-regulated cable, but now they they actually wrap it with a nichrome wire. You can see it there, uh, similar to our industrial heaters. Um, and then they nick the insulation between each um, conductor. And now you've created heating zones. And those heating zones are, are, are constant. So at, at 100 degrees or 300 degrees, it's the same output. And, and the standard ratings are, are 4, 8, and 12. Um, you can get up to 480 volt uh, with constant wattage. The, the self-regulating cable is limited to 2, 277. Um, so that is available, uh, not as common as say it used to be 10, 20 years ago, but there's still applications where this makes a whole lot of sense. One of which applications is, you know, burial. Um, direct burial, you put it in conduit. You, you, uh, this would be like a freeze protection application. If you're putting a, uh, you'll have a frosty where you can, you know, break up the concrete and stuff like that. Constant wattage is very common in that. Uh, for thermal input, there's a lot of you know heat dissipation. You can still use self-regulating for that application, and then there's you know various lab uh, reasons and and other design criteria that you would want to go with constant wattage. Now, going along with the engineered cables, uh, we also have a a we call it series long line cable still available, and it's essentially what it, it's it's conducted it it's you know you've got the two conductors again, but now this this middle piece is no longer the resistor as much as is is now the insulator and you're basically going with you know voltage drop over distance now you can get distances up uh, much longer in a single circuit now it's it's kind of specific to the type of application you want to do it's not you're not going to have a lot of branch lines and and, and facilities this is more for uh, terminals you know one straight long line uh, we we can do one circuit up to 7500 feet uh, at one circuit, and that's that's when you would fall into some kind of uh, design with, with something like this. And if you contact the Chromalox, you know, uh, sales representative, myself, or uh, anybody in our industrial heat tracing group, they can obviously walk you through that and, and show you how to take advantage of that product. Uh, two bundle, uh, a lot of people don't realize we have two bundle. Uh, two bundles, uh, pre-insulated uh, bundling uh, bundle cables. Uh, we, uh, we put our electrical heat tracing in that for the heating 
mechanism. You can get them one, two, three, four uh, tubes at a, at, at a time. And this is really nice for if you have a manufacturing facility and you don't have to go through and, and you know put the pipe, put the heat trace, put the insulation, all those things. It just comes in a tube bundle, start to finish, and then you'll have connection kits and stuff like that. And that is available from Chromalox and a lot of people don't realize. Moving on to uh, mineral insulated cable. Um, of course, we have a, a full line of this as well. These are for your higher uh, process temperatures, your higher applications. It's a constant wattage cable. Uh, not unlike our, our tubular elements, uh, only you can get these obviously significantly longer. Um, you get your, uh, your ink oil, your stainless uh, for corrosion. You know, we'll go through a whole design uh, criteria of MI cable, but the typical applications are, you know, you think of a HERSIG on a plant. Uh, a lot of times they use them for uh, uh, vents and, and gates and things. There's just a lot of unique applications that you can use MI cable for. And we have that available in any voltage wattage that goes up to div division one uh, in design. And you can kind of get an idea of the, the applications, which we will have trainings for later when we specifically will we'll spend a whole hour on nothing but MI design, installation, selection, all that good stuff. And that's things to come. Uh, today's obviously an introduction. You can see there's a screen I mentioned. There's there's a whole um, you know, there's a whole methodology but uh, behind good installation in any of our heat tracing products. And we cover that. We actually have some examples of troubleshooting and stuff like that. Anyone is welcome to. I'll show you the link at the end. And we're going to offer those uh, out to, the, to everyone as well. So uh, moving on, control. I mentioned control at the very beginning. You know, if you, you got your cable selected, you got your install, but that's more importantly, how do we turn it on? How do we turn it off? How do we make sure we're maintaining the right temperature in a good design? So we got a lot of different options for everyone. We got some that you'll recognize our, our competitors have, and we have some that are, you know, a little a little different, a little more advanced and, and have a lot of value in them. And, and we'll walk through that. So kind of a, a good, better, best approach. Um, you know, control is control. If you want to go with a thermostat on off control, um, you're not really looking for something too accurate. You just want to make sure that it's it's monitored. You know, we have thermostat connection kits that are part of our kit, as you see here on the left. So you can get a power connection kit and control all in the same box. Um, there's, you know, some standard in industry offer offerings and we're no different um, for just thermostats. And if you if you buy just a separate thermostat, you're still going to need a connection kit. Uh, to, for the cable termination and the power, you're just now not putting it in line and in the same uh, box or enclosure, you're now you know, adding pieces and parts, which is fine. We have those available. And then you have you know, your sensor types and, and mostly uh, RTDs when we're talking the heat trace world. Uh, you can get thermocouples, but um, it all depends uh, how you're controlling it and how the control signal is in our uh, controllers, but RTDs are the most standard. And you've got you know, surface mount, aerial mount, and we'll talk about those a little bit more in a minute. Um, but you've got, and then it's how you control. Like, so when you start to lay out your heat tracing uh, system, you may want to do it by environment. You know, if it's if it's freeze protection, most commonly, if it drops below next, you know, some temperature, we turn on all heat trace. Or you can control it line by line, which would be a line sensing. So where you actually need it, right underneath the insulation. And that's all decided as you walk through what is available to decide what's best for you, what's best for your application. And then, you know, back to the, the sensing side, you've got line sensing where, you know, there's an actual plate at the end of it that you can spread over the, the, the pipe or, or the place you want to put it. Um, you can, you know, mount them in the air, you can mount them, you know, wherever you need. And then we have ambient sensing ones. These are really nice because you know, they got the protection over the sensor. They, they can thread right into your control box. Really handy, standard stuff out of the catalog. So thermostats without a power connection kit. I kind of gave you the overview of that. These would be the standard ones that we have available. Uh, you know, NEMA 4 is the common uh, design. You can see them there with the, uh, the plastic boxes. We can get, you know, NEMA 7, uh, NEMA 9, explosion proof areas, you know, standard ones out of the catalog. The takeaway from these, and it's, it's, there's no real advantage to these over anyone else's offering. Um, 22 amps is the key to this because it's NEC code. It's what the holding coil in the thermostat can switch. Get anything higher than that? Um, well, one, you're probably not designing a uh, circuit much higher than that to begin with. But if you are, then you, that's when you look at a power distribution or something like that, and then we move it to a light, larger uh, design. 
Same thermostat or same principle behind it. We, we offer that in our connection kits. Here's the, uh, the old DL kits with the, you can see the line sensing here. So that would be, you know, under the insulation, right at, you know, where the rubber meets the road. Or you'd have an ambient sensing just to, hey, when it, you know, reaches a certain temperature in the, the plant, the facility, the environment, you want it to kick on. These are class one div two, uh, certified and approved. So that is really nice. I, it, it, it's more common than not that you can get away with just a, a, a bulb and capillary thermostat control. We obviously make these in our uh, U-series as well. So if you want, you know, a little higher profile, uh, thin rail mounted connections inside the terminal housing and that nice little uh, grommet to seal the cable, these are available. And then your sensors, I've mentioned them several times, so I don't really feel like we need to run through that, but you know, you've got the guide, they meet all the area classifications and you select those as you would need for your application. Here's, here's the, 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 the really unique one that we offer that, that would like to talk a little bit about. Same principle, uh, you've got control at the point of power connection of the cable, but now it's not a it's not a it's not a thermostat. It's not a, a you know it's not a on off. It's 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 not a thermostat running the power uh, selection. It's a solid state relay, so an SSR, right? And what we did is we packaged the solid state relay in the power connection kit. And if you were to spin this thing around, you'll see the heat sink on the back. This is class one div two standard, um, completely certified, and it's really nice because it. You know, some of these, you know, electronic uh, controllers, this one has actual temperature indication through the box. And you can see it there, kind of illustrated right there. It comes in one package. You just, you know, we get a lot of people, once they once they see this, this is perfect because you, you buy the cable on the roll. This is your connection kit. You got an end seal, you're all set. It, it, it's all the pieces and parts in one spot. You get the advantage of having the grommet and all that. Uh, you land every, you, know, you land your cable, you land your power on the side, and it's a 30 amp solid state relay. What that means is, so it has uh, logic already programmed in it, it's standard, and it actually pulses the cable on. And what that does, it's really, it, it, it's really nice because as it pulses the cable on, you have no inrush current. I, I didn't get much into that in detail, but when you're going and designing systems, this means you can have uh, longer run lengths. There's less concern of, of a cold start in tripping the breaker. It will it will help uh, in either. We get a lot of people in installations that are already at maximum circuit lengths and they're having problems. They'll come in and retrofit uh, their system with these. Um, if you're you know if we're able to design it before you install it, of course we'd always like to utilize the the best. Uh, the cost point of these things are fantastic. They're actually designed to sell. Um, and that's that advantage that comes with just the all-in-one power connection kit and control all in the same box, all in the same product. You're still buying a connection kit. You might as well get the control with it. And you have that solid state relay, which, I mean, it's not technically a, a soft start, but it kind of acts as one because of how it pulses on the cable and helps eliminate the inrush uh, to the circuit. Really great uh, product. Uh, if there's, you know, something that you remember besides the, you know, the way that the grommet goes together, this is, this has just been a, a fantastic advantage in the field and to your installation to make things run smoother. And you can get them with communications and all kinds of good stuff. And also, you can do them with the MI cable. There's a little connection kit. Um, we can have them tank mounted. That is an option. Uh, we have a a a, a uh, Kind of a, a bolt-on for MI installations. It, it's just it's just a really great product, and, and how a lot of our stuff is is migrating to as we uh, evolve as a heat trace company. So um, even though it's in the the better category, I, I put that as a, a best. But it, you can see how it fits in, into the other categories. So getting into the we'll say the better uh, side of things, we do have standard. Um, Package control boxes, one and two circuit designs. These are really nice for, for your smaller installations. It has an HMI on the front, as you can see, obviously, by the screen. It has current monitoring built in. It has, um, it has a real great uh, price point per loop. And again, this is, this is standard product, uh, catalog product. We're not doing anything special design. We don't need to. 
and it gives you all of the flexibility of, of specific control, temperature, set point, ramp up, all that available in one nice, uh, uh, nice little package box. You can get communication, um, Ethernet, uh, we have uh, IoT, uh, there's even a, a card to put into your BACnet. It, it, you know, as we move forward and even, you know, think commercial and industrial, this is this is kind of where things are migrating to. This is where your heat trace can, you know, your installation, you, you get to a more optimal design. And those are available, they're, they're 40 amp uh, circuits, SS, uh, SSR control, you know, just a real small package. You can, if depending on your location, your site, your install, this is where your programming, your lockouts, all that stuff can be taken care of um, in a, in a pre-packaged uh, unit. Now, if maybe all of those uh, options, controls, circuit monitoring, and all that stuff is not maybe what you need. Maybe it's a freeze protection application. Maybe it's a larger install. We also have what we call the, the, the uh, FPAS, FPLS. You'll notice AS and LS used a lot in our literature. That's simply ambient sensing or line sensing. So what that's saying is, you know, we're, we're if we're sensing ambient, we probably need one sensor, right? If we're sensing lines and multiple circuits in the lines, we need multiple sensors and, and the inputs are, are uh, designed to match. In these, we call them our, our weather trace product line. We have the basic design, as you may notice, no bells and whistles here, right? It's wired, it's done. You have a light to tell you if the cable's on or not. So, you know, going back to basics, is available. We also have a Z purge available for this one too, which is nice. And in the same design, if you're moving up in circuits, you know, up to 24 in one panel, um, we, we have the, this is a fairly newer version of, of an older unit um, that used to just have lights. Now we have a little bit of an HMI display and, and walk through between the circuits. Again, minimal control. You're just turning on a line or ambient sensing, you're turning on all your heat trays. But again, but this is off the off the shelf type product NEMA 4, you know, good for a majority of your installations if you're not needing real, real tight control. If you are needing tight control, think of that uh, first uh, ITLS, the, the, the one and two loop designs with that interface going to our best control. And that would be our ITAS and ITLS, which essentially is the same thing as that small little package from before. The interface is almost identical, only now it's designed and done in six circuit banks. The screen itself runs off six, you know, you can see six circuits at a time and you can, you know, tab right and left. And then now, you know, we're just expanding on that, right? We still have the, the current monitoring, uh, you know, uh, but also now we can come with, uh, they call them extension panels. And you can actually, you know, basically built on to up to 72 loops in a panel. Uh, so you think of a, a larger installation, a facility or whatever, and you need up to 72 loops. That's in one package. It's not to say you can't go above that. It just means now we need another panel, right? Um, but these are just, it's its simplistic uh, off product offering and design for your industrial you know, process system that, that meets all the demand, all the requirements the, you know, that you would need in a design straight out of the catalog. It doesn't it's not designed from scratch or anything. It's this meets all your third parties, your area classifications. You got the soft start feature, full communications, all in one, easy to understand uh, interface and box. Expand on them. And you know, just recently we got CSA uh, shop approval. Uh, that will be in our. It comes from our Tennessee facility, so that's even you know one more third party uh, certification on top of the UL, you know, CE, FM uh, part of that. Now. That's cable, that's connections, that's controls. Uh, sometimes, you know, power feed's an issue and we need transformers and we need, you know, that. We do pre-designed transformer skids uh, for your heat trace uh, installations. And I, I want to point that out because you won't find it in our literature. Um, basically, it's, it's uh, you know, you can see our panel bolts on and it makes a nice little skid package to fit into your system. Taking it a step further, after you've get, got everything installed and you've got the layouts, and please work with you know a Chromalox uh, representative in your area. Uh, you can go to our website and, and Google that, or contact me, and we'll we'll, we'll send you the right person. Um, you know, you've got your install, you've got it done, you've got your optimal design. Now you got to worry about control. Now you can control locally, or you can control through interface, through um, uh, several options of. Uh, um, Ethernet, uh, we have wireless controls and no 
no mystery there. It's 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 the wireless heart uh, uh, sensors. We have that as an install. We can use that to to integrate. A, a, maybe you've already got an install and the heat air and the you're not able to run wire for controls and all that stuff. That is an option that we can uh, certainly offer to you. Um, if you are doing a larger installation, you know even a, another bolt-on product. Mentioning all the things that we can pull from. If you're feeding in, you know, 72 sensors and all that stuff, we have these nice little panel boards that, um, you know, integrate up to 252 sensor inputs back to your control circuit, your panel, your DCS, however you want to do that. Again, off the off the shelf item. And then as we get to the IoT of things, right, the Internet of Things, um, you know, we've got these uh, uh, they call it Proto Air, basically bolt on into our standard industrial or heat trace uh, packages. And then you know now it's cloud based. You can monitor it from anywhere, your laptop, uh, you know, different country, whatever it is. And you can now integrate even more than just your heat trace. But oh, by the way, all the other products that that Chromalox offers, in, in a nice, easy, uh, controlled package, real easy to map uh, the signals and all that from there. Someone, some of you on the call, maybe uh, maybe designers, uh, maybe you know, how do I put these into my design package you think of building and construction and how you put things together uh we've i know we've worked as a company really hard in the last two to three years of getting uh, bim objects on everything so if you you do use uh, i think it's, it's called revit um to to do your design software or whatever you can actually pick and select our products and, and with it pull all the documentation that comes with it for the the contractor the installer whoever's bidding um to help you design your your process as well and speaking of design, we have design software for layout. Um, again, I've, you know, as I'm offering, you know, contact your local Chromalox representative, you can do it yourself or you can walk through it with them. Um, we have uh, it's called Chromatrace. You can go to our website. You just you know click download, pull it down your computer. Uh, if you have trouble with that, um, you know, sometimes it gets blocked by your, you know, your your company's firewall or something like that. That can happen. Just contact us. Um, you contact me. We'll send you the file. You'll be all set. It's nice because it does the design, it pulls the products, the pieces, the parts, you can build a bill of material really easy. But also if you're in the middle of optimizing or you know, maybe the design's not set yet, you can easily go back in and you got the same file, you can change this, move that, and it's really great um, to, to do that. And if you, you wanna see how that works, anybody on the call is welcome. You can go to YouTube, it's on our, our front facing page. Um, there, there's a, a complete tutorial, how to walk through start to finish, how to use the Chroma Trace uh, uh, program. And taking it a step further, I, we, we, we tried this uh, not too long ago where we, we started walking through applications and, and we'll do more of that going forward. That's actually the plan. We did a troubleshooting on Heat Trace, a good install, bad install, what went wrong here? Um, that's available to anyone. It's 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 good to listen to just to give you an idea if you are about to walk into a heat trace installation or have some experience or want to maybe touch up on on how to the proper way to install heat trace. This is a you know a good refresher starter uh, training that we had recently, but more important than that, um, we we recognize the need for that. And so as we move forward as Chromalox and the heat tracing, we're also now going to offer a contractor trained uh, program. Um, so basically, it, you think factory trained, um, you know, you'll get a you'll get a card, a certification that you you went through the program, and there'll be it'll be in two stages. It's uh, really close to being offered. We'll have signups. It'll be available uh, free at first. Uh, I would assume it might might turn into a, a case where there might be travel. Right now, we went we were originally going to do like schools where you know, travel there and go through the design and we do all the hands on stuff. And then, of course, you know, the, the state of things in 2020, we moved to a virtual environment and we're ready to go live with the virtual part of it. We'd still like to obviously nothing, nothing uh, uh, substitutes, you know, get, you know, uh, getting your hands dirty and splicing and doing all that stuff. We still want to do that. It's just not. Not till you know things start to lighten up and travel and all that stuff, but the program is available, and I wanted to point it out to everyone. We're going to start actually walking through the program in months coming up, and you're welcome to that information. We go through uh, things that you wouldn't even so things that you wouldn't maybe even consider in the design or the installation. You think you know, well, I need I need splicing tools, and I need um, you know I need electrician, whatever. But you also have to think in, in so in the 101, you're going to learn, you know, receipt and storage. 
you know, there's there's a procedure for that. You, you want to make sure that, you, you know, quite frankly, it's there to protect you. You want to make sure nothing happened from the quality procedure at the factory to when it's on site. Maybe it wasn't stored properly. Maybe something happened shipping. How to, you know, measure the cable, how to how to make sure that the, the resist, you know, the cable is still good, doing the testing, the handling, the storage. Um, a lot of training on pre-installation. Every, everyone on the call should probably have experience or know that you know nothing's as simple as it looks like on paper. There's prep work that needs to fall to, to, to prior to any kind of build, install, or whatever. You know, learn how to walk through where these things are going to go, uh, and help you stage your installation to save you time, save you cost, and make sure that it, it, it's done well. Uh, we're going to dive into to videos of production and how it's made, and talk about good adhesion on the the conductors. Um, so you truly understand the cable if you if you're you know interested and want to know how that works, and then you know tips and tricks you know things that we've learned. There's about five or six different. Well, I take it back. There's dozens of ways to to splice cable, but there's probably only a handful that are considered decent. Um, and we we'll walk through those and the advantages of of doing it one way over the other, and how to put together. And then there's going to be a 201 also available to anyone who wants to get into the the logic behind control, uh, optimizing your design, you know, and and just even integrating it with other products that Chromalox offers to give you the full package. So wanted to share that share that with everyone. Uh, look for that in the coming months uh, to be available. Um, It'll be available pretty much on the platform you're on right now. And, you know, available to schedule a time to walk through this, you know, have the the, the certification and, and design with Chrome Locks and provide from there. So a lot of verbiage for just going through a bunch of products, but that's fine. I wanted to introduce everyone to what is available for industrial heat trace from Chrome Locks now, uh, what you can look at, uh, maybe some advantages, some things to look things to, to watch for when you're doing your own design. Obviously, reach out to us as you as you see fit or you need our, our support. And um, thank you all for, for joining us. We'll open it up for questions.